Hi folks, Kendrick here from Code Viper, and welcome to the first video in a series of videos that I'll be doing on how to set up a save game system inside of Unreal Engine 4. Here in this first video, we'll cover how to save and load settings inside of a menu. So just before we start, let me show you really quick what the end result will be. So if I click play up here, you'll see our basic options menu. Now if I type some text into this text field here and increase the number field and then set the slider field to about 25% and click save, you'll see right here that it says game saved. Now if I exit and click play again, you'll see that these values are just where we left them, which means that it did indeed save and load properly. All right, so I've created a completely blank project here inside of Unreal with no starter content or anything. And I've created these two folders here. Uh, inside of this levels folder, I have this uh, completely blank menu level. And inside of the level blueprint, I just have this uh, little bit of blueprinting here that adds the options menu to the screen as soon as the level is loaded. And over here inside of the UI folder, I have that options menu. And currently it's just uh, a base design with no functionality or anything. So before we actually add anything inside of here, I'm going to go back into the root folder and create a new folder here. I'm going to call this blueprints. And inside of here, we're going to right click, create a new blueprint, and this will be of the type save game select. And we'll call this save options. Save that. And inside of here, we'll create three variables. The first will be text field and that will be of type text. Second will be number field and that will be a float. And finally we'll have slider field and that will also be a float. So compile and save that, X out. Now let's go into our options menu, open that up. And inside of the event graph here, we're going to create uh, three variables here as well. And it's uh, the same variables we just created earlier. So this will be text field, number field, and slider field. Compile and save that. Now back inside of here, we want to set each of these um, inputs here to automatically update those variables as soon as they change. So this text field uh, will scroll down here and get the on text changed event and just drag this text field right here, this text field variable, set it like that. That's all we need to do for that. And this number field will do the same thing here on value changed. Just drag that over here. Back inside of the designer, we'll do the slider field on value changed and it will change this slider field value. So now we have it set so that when any of these uh, input values is changed, it automatically updates to these three variables here. Now the next thing we're going to do is create three functions. The first will be save game, the second will be load game, and the third will be update widget. Now inside of the save game uh, function, we're going to first create uh, three inputs here. And I'm sure you can guess what they are. Text field, number field, and slider field. Type is text. Type here is float. And this is also a float. Now we just need to drag off of here and create save game object. And the class we'll be using is the save options blueprint we created earlier. Now drag off of here and promote that to a variable. We'll call this variable save options. Now drag off of here, cast to save options. As save options, we're going to set each of those three variables. So the first is text field. And the value we'll set it to is the input value here for the text field. Then we'll do the same for the rest of these, set number field. And set slider field. Now we just need to drag off of here, save game to slot. 
the uh, object we'll save it to is the save options variable here slot name will be called options and then we'll drag off of here create a branch if it's true or in other words if the game was saved uh, successfully we'll print a string and down here we'll also print a string so if it was successful we'll uh, print out game saved if it failed we'll type out error the game could not be saved compile and save that now go into the load game function and instead of having three inputs here we'll actually have three outputs and of course it's going to be text field number field and slider field compile and save now I'll just create some space here drag off of here does save game exist slot name is options we'll create a branch if it doesn't exist then we're just going to return a node with the uh, blank values here uh, since there, if there's no option slot saved then there's no information to get so just return an empty node if it does exist then we're going to load game from slot and the slot will of course be options grab the save options variable and we'll set it here and from here we'll cast to save options and then we'll get each of those variables so we'll get the text field we'll get the number field and we'll also get the slider field so line those up now we'll just create a return node and hook up each of these values accordingly and if we uh, compile it now you'll see that we'll get like a warning here and this is because if the cast fails we don't actually have a return node for the function so let's just create that and if the cast fails we'll just return these uh, blank values here so compile and save that now let's uh, do the update widget function and this also takes three inputs text field number field slider field now hold down control and drag this text field input value into here so we're getting this uh, input and we'll type uh, set text so we're just setting the text for this input element here set that up now get the number field input drag off of here set value and then we'll get this slider value here and set the value for it as well and the values for each of these will correspond with the inputs coming in to this function so the text field the number field and the slider field now let's create a reroute so just hold down alternate and drag each of these three variables into this function here and we'll first set the text field then the number field then the slider field let's neaten that up and of course the values that we'll set it to will be the inputs coming into the function here the next thing we'll need to do is go inside of the designer select this save button and scroll down here to the bottom and get the on clicked event and as soon as this button is clicked we're going to want to save the game so get the save game function that we just created hook that up and the values we'll save are these three variables here compile and save that now up here at the top uh, let's delete this event tick and drag off the event construct and let's uh, load game and then drag off of here and update widget now just line that up and hook up each of these values here so basically what's going on here is that as soon as the widget is created we'll execute the load game function which will check whether or not we have any save game information available if we do then it will provide it via these three output variables here we will then execute the update widget function which will res receive the information from load game and then update each of these input values accordingly now let's just compile and save that x out 
Now let's click play and maximize the window. Now you can see here that we have three blank input fields that are just at their default values. So I'm just going to go inside of the text field and write example text. And the number field, I'll set that to 12. And the slider, I'll set that to about halfway. Now I'll click save and you see up here it says game saved. Now if we X out and click play again, you'll see that uh, each of those values um, appear as just as we saved them. All right, well that wraps up this tutorial. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I've got lots of new content coming out every single week, so if you want to stay updated, then subscribe to this channel. This is Code Viper, and until next time.